Hello, YouTube. In this video, we're going to be looking at this retro build that I've been uh, working on for the past couple days. Um, you know, long story short, uh, I just kind of wanted to mess with the Pentium 2 grade system. I've never owned one, so I figured it would be fun to uh, experiment with that. Um, so, you know, I was talking to my girlfriend about this, and uh, she had a motherboard that is practically perfect for the Pentium 2. It's an Intel 440BX based board from Asus, the P2BF. And it can take um, Pentium 2s all the way up to copper mine Pentium 3s. So it's a very versatile board. It can take a lot of different uh, expansion cards, it can take a lot of memory. So it's pretty much a perfect fit. So, you know, we trade parts back and forth uh, a lot. So. She just said, yeah, yeah, take it, I, I don't really have use for it right now. So that's what happened. Um, so I ordered a Pentium 2 online on eBay, and uh, it arrived today, so that's why I'm actually going to uh, make this video right now. Because I just figured that uh, the CPU is quite an important component of such a system, so... And here it is. It has an IBM label on it, but it's just a regular Pentium 2 400 MHz, 100 MHz bus, 512 kilobytes of cache. This is the passive variant. So that's nice. As far as I know, this is already the, uh, the shoot core. So it should even run pretty cool and efficiently. It's 250 nanometer, I think. So two five micron, so that should be fine. So what do we pretty much need to do right now? Uh, first of all, we actually need to take out the video card for this, not to change the CPU per se, but it's mostly down to the fact that uh, I also want to change out the video card. So I just need to take out the retention bracket here first on the back. go. So that's that done. And now we can just pull the card out. So this card right here, this is a GeForce 2 GTS, 64 megabyte card. Funny story about this one is I bought this card a couple years ago. Um, when I first booted it up, it was artifacting like crazy. I didn't know what was happening, so I figured, eh, probably the card is dead because of old age or something like that. But uh, as it turns out, this card is actually fine. I fired it up in this system yesterday, and uh, it performed just fine. There's barely any dust in the fan either. It, it doesn't make a hell of a lot of noise. This card believe, makes me believe that it's actually not... It's not being used much in its life, so it's still in perfect condition. I don't know what was wrong with that board then. Maybe that was causing it, or AGP driver conflict. You never know if, <laughs> when you have so many v, uh, VIA-based chipsets. And SIS and stuff like that. I guess there was something wrong with the AGP driver is my guess. Because this car works fine, I played Arnold Tournament on it just fine. And that's a pretty heavy game for a system in this class. Didn't run, perf didn't run perfectly, but, but anyway. But this is a video card that will be going back in it. This is a uh, 3DFX Voodoo 3 uh, 2000. I don't know which particular company is the OEM of this card, but product of Mexico. Oh yeah. You better watch out with Donald Trump. He's gonna build a wall so we can't buy 3D effects anymore. Oh wait, <laughs> they've been defunct for ages. Well, you know what? Let's actually just leave the card out for now and just pull the CPU out first. I think that's a better idea, probably. I always hate pulling these slot 1 chips out, because they usually just don't want to come out that easily. Sometimes the posts here on the board are actually quite stiff. But uh, today, luck is in my favor. All I need to know now is whether the chip is DOA or not. Okay, there we go. Fits in just fine. I might be looking at adding an intake fan to the system because, of course, it is passively cooled. And uh, there's not really air going over the heatsink all that much. I only have this single exhaust fan here. It's a Noctua 92mm fan. It works perfectly, but, you know, 
when I had the previous chip in here. Actually, this was my proper testing chip. This is a Pentium 3 500. And uh, that thing got really, really hot for some reason. And, uh, you know, this actively cooled 550 here didn't really seem to care that much. I have problems with that 500 from the get go, so I'm just guessing it's it's a bad chip or something. Or that 550 might happen to be a copper mine core already, and uh, the 500 is still a cat mine, who knows? So, yeah, so that's that sorted. Now I've got a CPU in there, and uh, I just noticed that I totally forgot to actually talk about what's in it, uh, what's in this machine for other kinds of componentry and shit. So, well, here in the bottom, you can't really see it all that well. I'll just lean it over a little bit. There's a, an ISA sound card. It's Sound Blaster 64, AW64 value. It's just an overall very nice card. Runs full, works well with Windows 98. And uh, it does everything I need. Um, right here is a Realtek Gigabit Network card. Yes, Gigabit is a bit overkill for Pentium 2, but it's it was literally the only uh, <laughs> network card I had available. It has Windows 98 support, no problem. So, uh, yay Realtek. And uh, this is the 3DFX Voodoo that I talked about. Uh, we've got four sticks of RAM here. They're all 64 megabytes uh, SD RAM sticks. I had exactly four, so that's a total of 256 megs. I thought that was a pretty good match there. I mean, yeah, I could actually put in a gig. I've got plenty of RAM or like 512 megs or something like that. But uh, that's a bit overkill, I think. 256 is a good amount. Uh, here we've got a hard drive. This is a 40 gigabyte Maxstar with a uh, cylinder limit applied to the jumpers. Because uh, this motherboard will not uh, detect anything over a certain amount of cylinders. I forgot the exact number, but... Uh, so you need to uh, limit the capacity. So now it runs at about 33 gigabytes of the 40, and that's uh, absolutely fine. It's a good drive. Uh, I think I pulled this. I got this in, in a, you know, in a big pile of drives that I got a couple months ago, but never really used. This was the best 40 gig out of the pile. So it's it's still very quiet. Has low hours. Uh, still in perfect condition, really. And up here. Let me just adjust the camera. Is a, a DVD drive, just a regular uh, HLVT drive. So Hitachi LG, pretty much. I uh, wanted to go with like a, a normal optical drive, like a CD ROM or CD burner. This is a DVD burner, so yeah. But uh, I can't for the life of me get the front of this case off, so I figured, you know what, I'll just let it sit. And of course, we do have a floppy drive with a nice black front. Who doesn't like a big black front, right? So, let's just take a look at the case from a little bit of a distance here. So yeah, this, I, th I thought this case was actually looking pretty sharp. I actually like, it's, it's very angular, it's very... It, it has a retro feel, but it's also, you know, has a slightly modern edge to it. So yeah, all the drives are just hidden behind these black drive cages, so you can use base drives, no problem, you won't even see it. Here is, of course, the floppy drive, and we still have one spare uh, three and a half inch slot if you ever wanted to add a B drive, or if I wanted to add a zip drive or a card reader. But uh, yeah, if I want to add a card reader, I would have to add a USB card that actually has a, an internal header as well. But yeah, so that uh, gives us a better look. And uh, that's pretty much what the system is. Um, power supply is going to get swapped because this is some kind of generic unit. I don't really trust it that much. The system won't pull a lot of power, so that's a good thing. But So it won't actually overload that power supply ever. But uh, it is actually the loudest component of the entire system. Even when I had that GeForce 2 GTS in there and uh, the, uh, you know, the regular fan here in this Pentium 3, I could still just only hear that thing. Hard drive was quiet, uh, that fan of course from Noctua was quiet. Uh, all the other small tiny fans were qu more quiet than this freaking PSU fan. <laughs> so that's something to, uh, that I will change in the future but I don't really feel like doing right now because the system appears to be working fine. So, you know, that was pretty much the overview of this uh, Pentium 2 build. What will I be using it for? That might be something you want to know. Well, quite frankly, 
Uh, Windows 98 gaming, pretty much. I mean, uh, I have my dedicated old school uh, 486 computer. That's that project is still ongoing because I'm. Uh, I wanted to add a CD-ROM drive, but uh, I can't for the life of me get external controllers to work in it. So I figured I would just use the uh, the onboard IDE controller that can because it can use two devices at once, and just, they will just run at uh, ATA33 because that's what that controller can do, and uh, that's actually just fine. I mean, I've got hard drives, I've got the CD-ROM drive in there, but I can't find a, an IDE cable, so that actually will connect, uh, you know, one channel with master and slave. But that's something for a different video. Uh, once I get that sorted, I will make a video on that. I don't like tinkering uh, and troubleshooting on camera too much. So, you'll just see it when uh, the product is finished, and then I'll just go over everything I need to do to get it working. Anyways, for now, this is the end of the video, this uh, Pentium 2 build. Uh, I will make a future video to show you how it works. Um, after I've uh, done all my testing and uh, to verify that everything is working correctly. Hope you enjoyed this video. I thank you all for watching and see you guys in the next video.